you gotta have balls to paint trains and you don't even have to have that. You just gotta be willing to cop a chase, man. You gotta be willing to fucking cut your fucking hands up on the yard fence. You gotta be willing to fucking have to hide in a creek or some cunt's backyard for two hours if that fucking if it comes down to it, you know? That's the only head fuck involved in, in Galvin, you know? The tricky thing about Melbourne is, you know that DSG are out there, 90% of the time they're fucking doing nothing and they're nowhere in sight. But you know, 10% of the time or whenever, they're out there, they're somewhere, they could be anywhere. So basically wherever you go, you just gotta fucking check it out thoroughly, man, in case they're there. Because if they're there, they won't say nothing, bro. They'll let you paint, they'll fucking film you, then they'll ambush you, mate. I'd be lying to tell you if I loved it, straight, like, like on a whole. Because sometimes, half the time I'll be in there and I'll be rushing and I'll be loving it just with heaps of, like, What's the word? Like, uh, like positive thinking, but still nervous as fuck, you know? Other times I'll be like a mental wreck, man. I won't be panicking or nothing, but I'll just be sh fucking shaking, fucking sweating, everything, man. I feel like I'm fucking, you know, like, uh, it's, I can't explain what I feel like. It's like, com like completely shitting myself. But that only happens when I go to joints that I've been chased out of or something bad's happened or something, you know, and I just, you know, it's just when you put yourself back in that spot, it's like you do your shit, but you've got all these fucking thoughts popping in your head, like not visions, but you're thinking every sound, everything is some cunt coming to bum rush you in the yard, you know. I'll just like paint my mate's yard and just kick him back, smoking a cigarette and shit. I know society doesn't like, you know, a dude like me writing on the train system and stuff, but me riding on the train system compared to what I'm doing when I'm not allowed to ride on the train system. I reckon, honestly, it's so much more productive, like, for me to be a human, painting the trains, even though I'm vandalising them, I'm doing good work, you know, colourful shit, you know, that's better fucking, better life than, what, sit, sitting at home, smoking weed, watching TV, fuck that shit, man, like, that's the sort of shit you do when you can't walk and shit. Fucking 24, mate. Fucking all I want to do, man, is fucking paint trains.
go this way. For your 18, as long as you don't repeat offend, you, you can't get locked up, man. So you do anything you want. And now that I'm, eight, well, you know, over 18, oh, I've got to be extra cautious what I do, you know? Because fuck going to the big house for art, you know? That's all, you know? It is damage as well as art, but it's both, you know? You do shit the right way. You always wear gloves, you always fucking, you know, you're on the ball, know where you're gonna fucking run to, where you're gonna chuck your paint, where you're gonna fucking do everything, you know? And as long as they don't fucking grab you in the net with your fucking paint on you, they can't do nothing, bro, because you saved by two words. No comment. These are the best. <clears throat> rust oleum's the best but th this is just like this is the best paint you can rack or just plasties I've got enough for a half car like those fuels gotta get a few more of these for outline fresh green background blue lilac and Antique pink and like heather violet. They, these are bought for five bucks each. You can't get them anymore, man. They're the best. They're just the thickest. And these, these are, you can't really rack, but I racked them from this pedophile at Nutter Wadding. It gives people free pa paint to piece. But yeah, all, all of it's racked. That, that's like as fat as you get a pink dot German or to do some chucking out that's not nothing man I, I, I'd be sick if I was stocked up I'm not stocked up man Painting, it's an expensive habit if you get ganked, if you buy your paint. You don't get ganked and you rack your paint. You know, well, you know, you don't waste your money, man. Fuck wasting your money, man. What buy paint when you can just go in and do 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 do? Hey, fuck that. You have to be a dumb cunt to buy your paint, man. Whose bag this? STM? Fucking nothing, bro. Don't you chuck up STM when you're fucking not in the crew, you understand that? It's gotta learn, man. This yours. Sorry dude, it's nothing personal, eh? Hey? Just gonna use it for some trains. Sorry, Benny. Oh, it's a couple of water in a great moment. Oh. See you, mate. See you coming. I'm not banging it now. They're going to get it now? Yeah. From where? It's Julux bar. Julux? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one. That? Yeah, diamond red. What, what's this, man? <laughs> nah, man, fuck that. that. No way, bro. Nah, I've got it off that, man. Fuck bro, that. Come on, man. You can't roll I'm not fucking rolling you, man. Fucking rolling them dudes, man. That's my pain. That's I my took pain. it, man. Fuck you. Man, you fucking hit my racks non stop, bro. Hey? Take that and be happy. Man, you flog my racks, bro.
What? What do you want, man? Fucking the red and the... And this, the, man. I took it out of that kid's box, man. Oh, fuck. You're going to get more. Take all this paint, man. I'm not coming back here. Oh, fuck, man. Take their fucking paint, bro. Man, fuck, man. I ain't coming all the way to fucking give you paint, man. Benny, man. Fucking, there's heaps of paint coming back there. Oh, fuck, man. Have it. I'm not rolling your friends, man. If you're gonna claim you're some fucking rider, you gotta hit trains, you know? So like, half of my mates, they don't even paint trains, they just bomb trains flat out. But I fucking respect a dude that packs a marker and is out doing loops every day, getting up, than some cunt that can get fucking all these pretty fucking colours that his mum fucking gives him money to fucking go buy and then goes does some permission wall. Give a fuck how good this shit is, man. It's not as good as being a train bomber. That's what graph's all about. Be there in five to ten. All right, bye. The whole time my mum was pregnant, she was worked at my dad's butcher shop. And then when she had me, I was kept at the butcher shop in the back. I, got, I was lucky I didn't die of sudden infant death syndrome or something, man. Because, like, it's just like, you know, you shouldn't have your kid there. Well, I'm not saying, like, my mum was the best mother. My dad, he wasn't there, bro. My dad's all for cash. That's all he cares about is earning a fast buck, you know? But with, like, the way I grew up, as in, I was a good kid. My mum schooled me in. I had manners. I had ethics. I had everything. As soon as I didn't conform at home, so I got the boot. It was not her fault, it wasn't my fault. It's just miscommunication and I didn't toe the line. So I got the boot. And because I got the boot, I, I got put on young homeless allowance, which is, you know, it's a bit of cash to get when you're 14. I got something like 250 or something. But still, when you live out of home, you know, that's not much. So I began, I began to be a thief, I began to like take what, what you know, I wasn't going to go without. F -f Fresh. Well, I'm glad I know what I know because I know that if I don't have a cent in my pocket I know I can get me and my missus a feed, I can, you know, get anything, you know, I just, just got to have enough fucking guts to fucking you know bite your tongue and go for it get what you want when you don't have money you know and i know you you, you know you can do that you know you just you know you just got to not be lazy because if i if i wasn't racking the shit that i rack our money would be ghost in the first week you know so mate Nah, no, just do that when I'm mega G'd up, you know? I've got I to gotta be G'd up to do that shit. Today I was G'd up because I haven't been smoking. But when I smoke in the mornings, I won't rack, like, all day, you know? I'll, I'll get, I'll bug out and shit. When I don't smoke, boom, I'll take anything, bro. I'll G'd up, man, because I can run, you know? Anything goes down, I can hit the legs. When I'm staying, I'm a lazy cunt, I can't move. But then again, I can't really run that far. I am run about a K and then I start throwing up, bro. <laughs> but when you get new shoes, you feel new. So you can never have as many pair of shoes, you know? You want to have as many pair of Nikes as you can, bro. Where's my mates?
basically every rider doesn't pay for the Met. They just jump the tourney or centre it, centre the thing. But half the time I just couldn't be fucked, man, like walking the whole end of the station just to jump some Perry thing when it's some jab dude this big that's gonna go stick it, you know? I just go fucking stick it, you know, like fucking man. I swear on that, I, I bought my first ticket in like a year yesterday because I had so much shit, man. I had so much shit to carry, man. And then I was fucking devastated that I bought a ticket anyway. I was shattered. Could have bought a can of Coke. Ticket snapper. Well, I'll show you another way of getting in. For everyone that doesn't know. Oh, he's doing it, ready? Ah, uh, go bro, go. I've just got to show everyone how to get in for free. This is how you get in, hand of death. Get the hand, go one, two, three. And then you've got access. <laughs> Do you know about the hand of death, Eddie? I'm death when it comes to death. When I walk out the door of that store, there won't be anything left on the shelf. Sometimes I go racking by myself, but it's good when you got a crew who can give you some help. Hey, move over, give me some cover. I need to undo my belt so I can shove another can down my pants. So look around, it's chill. With the I can't seem to stand still I've got a few went to leave and just stop to see five or six blokes who all worked at the shop And one of them was holding a big wooden stick I better be quick or I'll be in the sheep Alright boys, who's got my fucking spray packs? Hey, should we give this kind of tank back? Nah, what you talking about? We haven't got nothing Get your fucking hands off me, who do you think you're touching? We were off like horses at the trots I could hear them like yelling We've already got the cops! I caught up with one of my mates just around the bend But I didn't know what had happened to my other two friends That whole night I was thinking that their mission may have failed And the cops could have taken all my details I saw both of them at school it's making a, They're making a new platform, that side But my old man, like I could have lived at his shack but he, he, his wife wouldn't have it, man, you know, and he chose his wife and his kids over me. Now, his wife has got a restraining order on him, kicked him out of his own house, lives in his shack, got his fucking new car, everything, man. Oh, my old man, was, he, lives in, he stays in a caravan now. He owns that house, man. He paid it off himself. He got rolled, rolled hard. Same chick, man. She gave me 50 bucks to leave the house and not come back. Shit. Full dumb bitch, man. Checked all my bags before I left. Just because I rack from the shops, man. She thinks I rack from everything. I don't know what I'm Checks all their CD covers, everything, man. I go 50 bucks, man. That ain't even gonna get me a taxi to where I need to go. It's true, man. I spent like 36 bucks on a taxi and I had like 14 bucks left. Fucking bullshit. When I grew up, I was a spoiled brat before my parents split up. I had everything I wanted. I had the best little car sets, train sets, a fucking Atari, everything, bro. Had a big fucking huge fucking dome full of lollies and gingerbread, man. Like, like a pizza hut, man. I had one of them in my own shack, bro. All the kids from the area used to come. You go, fuck going anywhere else. We'll just go to Justin's house, mate. It's fucking packed up, mate. You know, I've got the works there, you know. I had everything. And then, then I got everything taken away. So it was like, I still wanted the best of everything. And I wasn't going to settle for nothing. So I went out and took shit, and now I've, I've, 
I've done it for that long that it's like the normality to me, you know. Did ya? Where at? <laughs> Turn it on. Maya, you should ask me. Um, let's beat her. Did you? Did he? And I said, I said, what? And she goes, he punched me in the head. And I went, did you punch him back? And she goes, no, her head hit a wall. And she got knocked out. I don't know oh. if he did any more than that. Poor so. Dulce. She's still with with Lex. No, she hasn't heard from him in a week. I told her how he called you up trying to get you to get a hold of her and how you were just like... I'm going to make over. Are you finished? Yeah, we'll see. No, a lot of people more, around my age is like get a girl pregnant and they'd be devastated, man, like, I think it's just because I actually do love my girlfriend, like, I, I, I don't know, like, it would be pretty devastating if you did get a girl pregnant and she, you know, she was just an oot you know, like, she was just some, you know, drunk chick, you know, like, you'd be pretty shattered if she was ugly and that, and like, oh, no, that's pretty harsh, but like, you know, like, <laughs> If you know you just didn't have a bond with her and then you got a kid with her, it's like, you know, fuck that. That's all I'm so wrapped because, like, I get along so well with the person that I'm having the kid with, so it's like, it's like we've got a family, you know, got a little puppy or like a little dog and that. For 20, 20, blah, 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 and I've got a family. And my chick just cracks the shits because, like, my mates, heaps of them don't have any responsibilities or nothing. So they'll just call me up or come around whenever and just think, you know, that they won't think that I've got a kid on the way and shit like that. And that they'll just expect me to just come out and do whatever, you know. And that's what my chick cracks the shits about. She's the one for the contraction? She believes that there's talent involved in half of it. This one is for the heartbeat. But she doesn't mind it. She'd just rather me, you know, do something that's going to make me cash and shit, you know, instead of doing something that all I get a photo. But to me, that's, that's what, what I do it for in the end anyway, you know, I get my photo. In every photo, you can look at it and go, you remember that night, you remember who you were with, because yeah. you know, there's always, every night you go paint a train, no matter who you're with, something funny happens, yeah, or you've got a mission to do something, or someone won't have gloves or something, so you have to fucking mission around and try and rack gloves or something, and it'd just be like, it'd add a, like a funny twist to it, you know, like, there's always like something, you've got to do something, or, you know. Nine years, man, every day. Flavors. From 16, 17, I guess, every day. And then for the last four years, four or five years, it's been mixed with backy, so it's just been, you know. Before then, I never had a problem, man. I never skits out. Ever since I moved to Melbourne this first time, man, when I started hitting Melbourne Bugs, mate, you know? Two fucking ciggies per gram, fucking. Now I, I can, before, man, I used to be like, oh, you know, I couldn't smoke that. Now I could fucking pack a billy up to the fucking roof, mate. And I'll fucking punch it, like, no worries. <laughs> it's the worst. Well, I actually do that now, like, 
like I have to pack my canes as big as I can just so I get the fucking you know like well, it's fucking ridiculous man Fuck man, I reckon it would have been easier to run a hundred metres flat stick than pull that beauty. Oh. <laughs> Anyone want a bug? I'll change the water of course. <laughs> this is about as much as my cleaning duties go. The bug. Got to get a new one. Everyone that watches this will just go, oh, that jizz lad, he's a chat man. Look at his bug. He smokes out of an orchard at home. True? I would. No, I'm starting to feel the effects of weed, man. My wife's more important than fucking, you know, he's skitzing out. Like weed's good and it's like I skits out enough to know that it's that much of an important bit of my life but I know that if I keep going I'm going to have mental problems and fuck that man because I'm, I'm still sane bro as much as people don't think it I'm still fucking sane as but when I tell you about when I lose it, when I tweak out, I fucking tweak out hard, man. You know? I don't, fuck, I don't want to be like five years later when like my kid's like, you know, just about to start school and I'm fucking lost my brain, you know? I've got a school to cut in for 15 years or something. 18 years. But, you know? How can you school a kid in if you fucking lost your mind off bugs, mate, and you're still on them? You can't teach them nothing, mate. I'd be shattered if I couldn't watch, like, my favourite shows w without a truth, man. Like, I'd be fucking, you know, just angry. I just love just having a truth and just arcing back watching your favourite TV shows, you know? I hate chuffing and going outside or going, you know, even just going to the shop. But I don't, I don't feel embarrassed because I'm. St I just hate the feeling of it. Don't you know? Whenever I'm stoned, I just want to be on my ass, man, just kicking it, or with an iced coffee or a Slurpee or something, or or a Jim Beam, just kicking it. Saturating Victoria's trains, trams and buses in the new bush to improve passenger safety. The plane cove officers from the Transit Division's new rapid response team will oh, target coppers throughout the city's public Thanks for showing your face. Just because you don't see a uniform presence on, uh, on the train or tram doesn't mean that they're not there because the person, in fact, that may be sitting next to you may be an undercover policeman. Supported by uniform police and mobile units, the team will boost passenger security as well as helping prevent graffiti and alcohol-related incidents. 66 women factory workers have made... At 3 o'clock Sunday morning, her membranes broke, and that's when her labour started, and it lasted from 3 o'clock in the morning to 11.58 the next day. Is he alright? Yep. Fine. Yep. I looked at my baby and I was like, oh, he's a conehead, the poor dude, you know? He's like got like down sinners or something. And I was like, it's going to be heartache. 
Does he look like a child to you? Oh, look at him. I have never felt more emotional in my life. When the kid popped out, I cried, bro. And I, I haven't stopped crying. I still cry. It just overwhelms me. Just like the whole, the whole deal of it all. Like, yeah, it's just like it's brought my emotions back into life. You know, I feel like I'm human again. I reckon. Yeah. Anyone can throw punches and run around, staunch and dudes standing over dudes, but that ain't a man. A man's a family man. A man's a, a bloke that looks after his mother of his child and his child, that, that's what a man is. After the labour I just run in and out, constantly getting sour, real food because she hasn't eaten, you know, junk food for so long, so I was just bringing pizzas in and Hungry Jacks, you know, all everything, like, just packing her up because she did so well, she went through so much, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a top to bottom check, okay. Then just the day before we left the hospital, they wanted to measure and, and, and weigh him again. And it was all sweet when they weighed him and stuff. But then when they, they you know, they're like, we want to measure his length. And she's like pulling his legs, pulling his arms down like a tug of war. And I go, fucking chill out. You know, I go, fucking pull up, you know. And I held him, you know, and like slowly sort of put him down. I go, fucking be quick, you know. Like the nurse was ODing, but like, what could she do, you know? Yeah. I want to change my ways so that I'm not, not respectable in the community's eyes, but so that by the time my son's old enough, he can look at me and go, well, well Dad does stuff the right way. I, I want to be like Dad, you know? If I keep on going the way I'm going, I'm being a thief, being whatever, he's going to grow up and go, well, you know, Dad steals this shit. Dad stands over whoever. I don't want my son to get in trouble, man, no way, like, fuck that. It's the worst, mate. Life's too short to fucking fuck yourself over. But then again, life is really short. And, you know, like, for someone like me, what I'm doing now could be wrong and it could get me into trouble, but, you know, I've, you know, you only live once, you know? Like, I'm a pretty uneducated person, I can't just, like, go to myself today, I'll quit and I'll fucking go be whoever tomorrow, it's not that easy, you know? Like, I've got to think about getting a job for my kid, instead of thinking about fucking what uni course or something I can do that's not going to pay me shit, to like, you know? Like, I'll just, I don't know. If I'm not in a like a good job in five years time or however and I totally hate my job and I'm hating myself every day just hating life I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna walk and I'm gonna do exactly what I do now and just rack shit man I swear man I'll fucking go rob a TAB or something I'll just go for it man because I don't I don't want to live and just have nothing man I'm not ashamed of what I do, but when, when I think about, like, with graffiti, graffiti is strictly for the self, it's not for cash, it's not for nothing else but yourself, you know? And I, I want my son to, to be something where he's going to be successful, like, graph is only going to get me in jail or fucking, you know, like, in trouble with the law. I, I want to make sure my son goes the direction where he's, like, not gonna fucking face the bullshit that I've dealt with, you know? Even though, like, everything that I've dealt with is like, you know, I chose it, 
but I'm going to be there to assist him more that he doesn't go off the rails, you know? Well, that's just how I figure it, you know? Like, I could see, like, Charlie coming home after the hospital. Oh, I could see him coming home and I could see me, like, quitting graph everything, man. Justin, I put it to you that over the last two years you have used the tag Jizza. You're known as Jizza. And you put up the tag or mural Jizzo. What do you have to say about that? No comment. Uh -huh. Justin, you are going to be charged with criminal damage. You're not obliged to say or do anything unless you wish to do so. But whatever you say or do may be reported and given in evidence. Do you understand that? No comment. Do you intend to make a no comment interview? No comment. All right, Justin, uh, we're going to conclude this interview. Would you agree that the time is now 13.13 or 1.13 p.m.? No comment. All right, interview is uh, completed. The only thing that went through my head when I got the knock was, right, they're here. I knew they were going to come here one day, I just didn't think as soon as they would, you know? But that's life, mate, you know? They were knocking on the door, so I go, Justin, someone's at the door. He goes, oh no, it's them. And as soon as I got the knock, man, I knew, because, you know, it's the hard knock, six o'clock in the morning, mate, what else, you know? It, it, everyone knows that, you know, everyone knows I've got a kid in that. They wouldn't, like, ram on me door. I didn't have this locked. So they started booting it. And I fucking, I came over. And I go, chill out, cunts. And I fuck, because I had this thing over it at first. Because I went like this and I went, fuck off, dogs, and slammed it. And then fucking, then they were at that door, smashing that door, going, don't think about it. And then I fucking... 
I came back to this door because he started booting it. And I fucking, I unlatched it, opened it up, and I fucking, I got rushed, man, into that corner and booted and slammed into the ground and cuffed. We all grabbed him and pushed him around the corner and, and put him down on the ground and put his, um, put the handcuffs on him. And the idiot starts going, it's too tight, you're hurting my hands and, and fuck you guys, you fucking assholes, come to my house, who the fuck do you think you are? You know, they fucking threw me around and shit in here while I, I was cuffed, man. What sort of a dog ties you up and then fucking gets staunch on you, you know? But Justin kind of went about it the wrong way by telling them that, you know, that he's going to go out there and do more damage. This doesn't mean anything to him. It just makes him more pissed off. And, you know, just like if they wanted to, they could have listened to that and put it down because they told him not to say anything. If he didn't want to be, um, if he didn't want to get in trouble for it later, and he was standing there saying he did do the damage, he was gonna go do more. He's the king of Melbourne. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, they just waste their time and their resources on trying to fuck with someone like me when there's cunts out there, fucking stabbing cunts, bashing cunts, rolling cunts, raping cunts, fucking. All sorts of the illest fucking crimes that not not even a crime, they're just ill, you know, and, and then they come to my shack over, you know, over going all city, it's like, you know, it's ridiculous, bro. You know, they should use the government's money to fucking, you know, catch real criminals, not fucking, you know, not small timers like myself, mate. Where I live, there's like, there's hundreds of people selling smack and everyone's dying. Fucking looking like shit. And I'll fucking make everything look good, but they'll come shut me down. Yeah, I feel like a fucking gutted fish <laughs> sitting on the table waiting to get cooked. It's like basically me sitting at home waiting to go to court. It's kind of good though to like to have a break. But that's only from the like, the bombing side and the stealing paint side and all the bullshit that comes with it. But the painting side, I really can't come to facts with it. I'm scared of like losing my family. I'm scared of getting raided again, which will be a result of me losing my family. So yeah, I'm in a bit of a no-win sitch. Now they've shut me down f emotionally, not physically. They've shut me, they've kind of warped my head a bit at the moment, because I've got a lot to lose and I know that. Hello, Matt? Yeah, it rings Yeah, I will bro. All right, bro. Where are you at the stage? Yeah. Yeah, all right. I'll ring her now, man. Yeah, no worries. I'll come back to Auburn soon, man. I'm just at Eddie's house. Oh, yeah. All right. Where about? I've got heaps of negatives on me, man. I've just fucking found heaps. Yeah, girls. Oh, there's a few, but I've chucked all of the film in um, the, the film shop now. Yeah, sick, bro. Yeah, I've got a few in the Yeah. Oh, sick, man. Sick. Cheek. Yeah, I'm more scared of my girlfriend than I am of DSG. Just wants me to do something that will benefit our future. Getting a fat photo album doesn't really do much for me family, except for me. I should just make another appointment now to come in and see my brief, yeah? Uh, I'll contact you when you've got it. Alright. Okay. Alright, see you later. That guy's a fucking tool. Yeah, I fucking... I'm not gonna get locked up or nothing even if I get found guilty of it, bro. 
serious. He goes, the worst thing that they can do to me is give me a community-based order, and that's community work. I'm denying it anyway, man. I'm going to get it all dropped. I said to him, I go, mate, I go, I'm not happy with this, mate. They come to my house, give me more charge sheets, call me a dickhead in front of my family and shit. I go, don't get me wrong, mate. I know how to fucking paint. I don't fucking paint the trains that they're saying I did, mate. But if they want to fucking charge me for trains, I'll go out and fucking paint some fucking trains. Fucking fucking trains. Trains, trains, trains. Right. I know exactly why graffiti is illegal. It's because of the fucked up world that we live in that's run by fucking money, which is a fucking train that I fucking paint is illegal because I didn't pay the fucking train company to, for my advertisement to run on the train. I got my advertisement for free because I'm a smart enough human to rock up and do something without paying for it where everyone else, because they abide by rules and regulations, all they do is give their money up and their shit runs all city, man, because they paid for it. Because we don't pay for it, our shit just gets cleaned off and we've got a bunch of rejects running around looking for us. No, I got fucking seven months jail, suspended for two years. My heart went to my fucking, fucking down to my balls, man, and then sprung back up my throat. And then she goes suspended and then I start breathe again. But I don't want to go there. Dudes in my crew go, don't worry, man, you'll be all right. This dude's in, in my crew, old school dudes that would look after me and shit, but fuck that, what? What's the possibility that I'm gonna get sent to the same camp that they're at, you know? Fuck it, man. I don't wanna go there, mate. It's bad enough fucking living on the west side than going to fucking live in jail. Fuck that, I'm gone there. I couldn't handle being around like that many boobs as well. Like, like I love crime, don't get me wrong. I love it and I, I, I love hearing, you know, stories, this and that, but 24-7, day in, day out, cunts talking shit. It, it scares me more than anything because I know that if I break the law, I'll, I'll go to jail if I get caught. So if anything, if I wanted to do graffiti still or if I wanted to do anything, I'm not going to have fun doing it because it's just a constant stress. It's fucked, I can't even rack a fucking drink without a seven months jail hanging over my head. Can't do shit, man. Because I've had my, my sort of hobby taken away from me, which I don't have any other hobbies that I, I wish to pursue, where it's just left me in a rut of just being like, what, what can I do with my life? I, I don't like skateboarding. I don't like art for other people, I like doing my own shit. Since I got raided and I, I haven't been able to do graffiti and I've really just got nothing to do, which led, led me to excessively smoking a lot of, a lot of fucking weed, man. Which led me to detox two times to try and get off the shit because I was abusing my body that much from the cops taking all my shit and just everyone else that's getting done for graph is just getting let off getting CBOs and shit and I get all my shit taken I get beaten up and I get a fucking suspended sentence and fucking they, those cunts made me lose my brain, mate.
because I'm not racking shit and that, I'll fucking constantly running out of money or fucking have to borrow money off my chick and then I'll be in a rut where I'll be fucking trying to fucking ill day ugdrays and shit and then I'll be like getting behind in that and then I'll have to borrow money or won't be able to pay her back $50 that I owe her or something, you know? And it just causes tension. You know, I should go out and get a job but, you know, I'm on sickness benefits and I don't, I don't go out and look for work. And even though if I could get a job, I probably wouldn't even stick to it, you know? Because I'm not like a normal person. I can't deal with a lot of shit a normal person can deal with. But if I wasn't on a suspended, it wouldn't be like that. But then again, if I didn't do graffiti and get in trouble, then it wouldn't be like that anyway, you know? So I've got myself to blame and I know that. I'll never be over graph, man. I'm fucking a purebred, bro. Fucking meant to graph, mate. And it's nothing I've ever done in my life that I've felt as comfortable as when I'm out painting, doing a piece or scribbling on a train. There's no nothing that beats that. It's, it's the rawest art form ever. It's the rawest hobby you could be involved in. It's not like you go out there and you lose today or you fucking, you know, you won't win and then you, you, you know, or you get sent off the field. It's like, you fucking lose, you lose, man, that's it. It ain't no second chance shit. That's what's so real about it. If I was like everyone else, I'd live like everyone else and be a sad, matrixed out motherfucker that wakes up every day at nine, goes to work, comes home at five, eats said dinner, watches a bit of shitty TV, then goes to sleep and does it all over again. I'd rather be, my, you know, my own person and do what I want, when I want, and not have to answer to anyone. And if that means that I can't do it for, what, two years while I'm suspended, I'm gonna have to fucking take it on the chin, man, because to me, as much as I love graffiti, going to jail for the shit ain't worth it, you know? The day I'm off my suspended is the day that I start playing this game we call graffiti with the reject cops of Melbourne. Wherever there's trains, there's always gonna be graph. As long as you can get to the train, and get 5, 10, 20, half an hour, whatever, there's gonna be shit's gonna be running, man. Because there are gonna be dudes like me out that wanna fucking do as many as we can in this little time that we've got on this earth, you know? It's, fun, it's all about spicing your life up, you know? You can either live for 20, 30, however long, and then die. You know, you, you could be part of the matrix and just have some dead end job, work pay your mortgage off and just die. I'm gonna do all that shit, but I'm gonna get a hundred gals under my belt, you know? I'm gonna die with a fucking fat photo album there, you know? Hopefully, see how it go.